So as we've always done in lemma, in linear algebra, we start with geometric vectors. We start with geometric vectors. Study whatever it is that we want to study with respect to the geometric vectors. And then we notice a way to carry the analogy, the metaphor, to other spaces. So the same thing will happen here. So here's the definition. Well, let's draw them. Here is my vector A. Does this vector have a length? Yeah, if I pull out my tape measure, and I'll be able to measure it. A, it does have a length, I agree. And here's a vector B. Does B have a length? Yes. Okay. Can I measure the angle between them? What do you call the tool? The protractor, isn't it? Yeah, nobody uses it anymore. Okay. So let me now write down the definition. The definition that all of you know, but I want you to take a fresh look at it. So A dot B, so this is called the dot product, or the scalar product. It's called the dot product because you put a dot in between. We call it the scalar product because the result is a number. But I'm not yet calling it an inner product because inner product will be the linear algebra generalization of this concept. Will is defined as the length of A times the length of B times the angle between them. Let's give it a name. Gamma, so it's neutral between alpha and beta, times cosine gamma. That's the definition. Are you familiar with it? Yes, you are familiar with it. So in this situation, do you see what happened? Length existed there before the inner product, because we had a tape measure. Angle, so these concepts came first. Length and angle came first. And from that, we defined the inner product, and it's this combination. So remember this order, because it will be reversed when we generalize it. It's a beautiful invention. I don't know who came up with it. Not any one person came up with it. It's something that slowly dawned on the scientific community. Okay, so that's the first point I want to make. The second point that I want to make about this expression is that it's completely meaningless. What does it represent? In this picture, what does it represent? Right, we took some geometric notions, we put them into this combination, and we got a number. What does it represent? Is it the length of the projection of one of them onto? No, it's, no, it has wrong dimensions, right? Right, if this was a sign, you could say, hey, it's the area of the parallelogram. That would have an interpretation, right? Remember with a sign, it becomes the area? That would be cool, really cool. But, that's, but there isn't a sign, there's a cosine. That's different. So what's the meaning? What's the geometric meaning of this expression? And the answer is none. That's what's so remarkable about it. It's not something that you can invent. Because when, well, I don't know what I'm saying. You know, because some, it just slowly people realized that this is the right combination. And here is why it's the right combination. It's because through this combination, you can express everything. Through this combination, in addition to the elementary things we already do in linear algebra, which is only two things, adding vectors and multiplying them by numbers. But if you just have this combination, you can do anything geometric. It's not a theorem. It's experience. We can do anything. So I'll give you a couple examples of how you can do anything. Okay, so I will actually skip the first two examples that are usually mentioned, that are usually mentioned, because they're so simple, they're ridiculous. And you sort of think that you're being tricked. So I'll do two non-standard ones. No, excuse me, not ones, there's totally standard. Just not, a little bit beyond the trivial. And so one of them will be the projection. Will be the projection. Let's see if we can express, and now I'm realizing that maybe I'll have to do the simple ones first, but we'll see. So suppose that here we have a vector B, 
I'm drawing it as horizontal just for convenience. And a vector A, okay? And then let's find the geometric projection and we'll call it P, okay? Let's try to express P in terms of A and B and throw the kitchen sink at it, meaning you're allowed to use whatever you want, lengths, angles, whatever you want. You're allowed to use. All I'm, all I'm requiring is that you express P in terms of A and B. So what direction does P point in? Yeah, it points in the direction of B. So whatever it is that we'll get will be proportional to B. So it'll be some number times B. You agree? Okay, step in the right direction. Okay, that's very nice. What number? Well, let's see. What is the length of P? So just answer that question. I see lots of volunteers for other things. You have the length of P? Yeah. Okay, gamma. Well, so we'll call it gamma. So the length of P is the length of A times cosine of this angle. You agree with me? Remember that from projection from the right triangle, how sines and cosines work? Is this correct? No, it's not correct. It's the wrong length. Because this expression, this vector that I have right here, has the length, whatever this number is, times the length of B. And we want it to be this number. So what do we have to divide by? You have to divide it by the length of B. You guys are with me? Now it's correct. Let's see. Let's make sure it's correct. Where does this vector point? In the direction of B, right? Because it's proportional to B. You guys are with me? Are you enjoying this geometric discussion? Because we're in the geometric space. It seems like we're going in the wrong direction for discovering something that applies to polynomials and Rn. Okay. But remember my claim that this is such an ingenious combination that everything can be expressed through this combination. And I'm not quite seeing that combination here. But can I artificially put it there? Like what's missing on top from having this combination? And so I'm just going to put it in. You guys are okay with that? So I will multiply the top by length of B, and I'll multiply the bottom by length of B. Just as an artificial step to get it to this. I'm telling you, this is very artificial. It's so artificial, it ends up being perfectly natural. Did something good happen? Yes, because what is this combination on top? Hey, it's A dot B. Step in the right direction, no doubt. And what do I have on the bottom? The length of B squared. But that's not good enough for me, because I want to have nothing but dot products. I don't want to make a reference to length. The whole claim here is that if you have this combination, if you can evaluate nothing but this combination, plus addition and multiplication by scalar. Then I can express anything geometric. That's the claim. So I don't want to say length of B squared. I want to go away from that. I just want to end up with this. Yes, Gore? Is, is it B dot B? Well, you say yeah. But what about everybody else? Is it B dot B? Well, let's think about it. What is B dot B? B dot B is the length of B times the length of B, times the angle between B and B, what is cosine of the angle. What is the angle between B and B? Zero. And what's the cosine of zero? One. So when you dot something with itself, it just equals length squared. So this is B dot B. And there we go. We have conquered one task, finding the projection. On the right-hand side there, you have no lengths. You have no angles. You just have inner products. And so this absolutely meaningless 
combination, by all accounts, not by all, but your, by initial impression, completely meaningless, me represents nothing. Like they're kind of echoes of some things in there, but really nothing. All of a sudden you say, oh, okay, okay. Okay, I see that it's convenient. If I were a computer scientist, who is a computer scientist? Raise your hands. Okay, this would be a convenient function to have, dot. Because I would only have to call that function to find the projection. Good way of thinking about it. I would only have to call this function called dot. I wouldn't need a function called length. I wouldn't need a function called angle. I wouldn't need a function called cosine. All I would need is a function called dot. And I'll give it a and b, and whatever number it returns, I'll remember. And then I'll give it b and b. And whatever number it returns, I'll remember. I'll divide one by the other. That's standard. That's just dividing numbers. I'll multiply it by the vector b. That's part of linear algebra, and I'm done. So all you need is the dot. OK, can we do the same thing with vector q? Well, of course we can, because q is just a minus p. Do you guys see that? So it's the way, good way to think about what's the, what's the value of q. Well, if you think of q as replacing a, then that's kind of a way of starting with two vectors that are not orthogonal and making them orthogonal. And we'll learn that orthogonal is better than not orthogonal. So that's the value of q. It's almost like a star. It's replacing a with something that's orthogonal to b. OK, another thing, well, not surprising, very so related to p that, of course, it's that. <clears throat> but that's nice. OK, so now I will show you. So let's call this one application. <clears throat> and let's put something in our vault. The fact that length of a is, would you agree with this, that it's the square root of a dotted with a. So this is where you make the broad statement that lengths can be expressed through the inner product, which at this point, until you see the whole framework, might sound stupid, because you defined inner products in terms of length, and now you're expressing length in terms of the inner product, which you need length to evaluate. So right now it seems a little stupid, right? The purpose of this, it's correct, but the purpose of it seems elusive. But it, it will not be. So just remember that lengths can also have something with nothing but inner products and just algebra on the right-hand side. 